Okay. Um, so some of you may have read about uh, a uh, cybersecurity incident with the city of Atlanta. They were hit with something that's called uh, Sam Sam ransomware. This first uh, came out around um, in 2016, um, but at the start of this year, uh, security researchers started seeing a, a kind of a reappearance of this. Um, specifically, it ex exploits uh, some Java vulnerabilities, um, but the most kind of dangerous part of this software is that it can delete backups. Um, and that started as Veeam backups, but uh, and I don't yet know if, they, if we've seen an instant in the wild where it uh, goes after another backup system, but uh, we can assume that they will be seeking out other backup systems as well. So this is a particularly dangerous um, piece of ransomware because it, uh, our, our, one of our core recovery mechanisms is falling back on our backups. And if they've gone and, and deleted those backups, we obviously can't fall back to them. Um, so they are asking, I believe it's $51,000 um, from the city of, of Atlanta. How'd the breach occur? So there's a little bit of speculation here um, because the city of Atlanta has been a little bit less than transparent in um, with the public about how the breach happened and even some of the, the details about it being ransomware in the first place is partially speculative uh, because it was leaked to the press, but uh, no public statements from uh, the city itself. So from what we understand currently, um, the belief is that this was a result of some poor port hygiene, some ports that shouldn't have been open, that allowed the attackers to scan uh, portions of the environment to identify any um, servers that still had this this job of vulnerability so obviously another piece of that is unpatched vulnerabilities that um, that the city should have had patched um, there are some interesting notes in here too in that uh, the city is in the midst of a migration to some cloud services um, and so the breadth of the attack was actually reduced as a result of some of those services um, uh, living in cloud environments that are a little bit more up to date in regards to patching and uh, so I guess to some degree that speaks to uh, the strength of the cloud at least as it relates to patching and, and um, keeping up to date so that's what we know about about the breach um, so far I also wanted to look at kind of a timeline of, of where we're at. So this started around 5 a.m. on March 22nd. That's uh, last Thursday. Um, we are now at March 26th with, with no resolutions. By March 23rd, um, the affected systems, most of the affected systems were shut down. This extends to um, Atlanta's airport, which is the busiest in the world. Um, or at least the busiest in the US. But uh, so obviously this is crippling to the city to not be able to uh, have their services operating. Um, and being down for at this point uh, five days uh, for any business that's generally considered unacceptable. Um, and so we can see some of the ramifications here uh, uh, for, for the city of Atlanta. So there's a lot of lessons learned from this one. Um, first of all, basic security hardening. Uh, it's, it doesn't seem like the city uh, was up to date in that regard. Certainly patches were behind, but also just network security, uh, having open ports that shouldn't have been open. Uh, there are some uh, reports uh, that uh, the attack was initiated over RDP, things that should be locked down, um, particularly outside the network. So um, basic security hardening does not appear to have been done or at the very least uh, been kept up to date. Uh, regular vulnerability scans. So understanding uh, uh, what your vulnerabilities are we prefer to scan on at least a quarterly basis, though we understand that 
there are costs that come with with running a scan on, on that kind of frequency at the very least doing a ver vulnerability scan on an annual basis to see um, where you might be at risk um, we add new servers a lot we add new network equipment um, things change in regards to uh, public exploits and, and things like that scanning the network and understanding where you're vulnerable could have helped to uh, at least reduce the impact of this patching um, we again stay up to date on, on your patches um, most of the major um, breaches that we see are the result of um, of patches being behind. I think the Department of Homeland Security estimated around 75% of, of these breaches are a result of patches being behind. So if we look at something like WannaCry, with hit, which hit last year, that patch had been available, uh, I believe it was about three months prior to the attack that, that took down um, a large portion of the UK's um, healthcare system. So patching uh, and putting a program in place is important. So we do monthly patching on ourselves as well as on um, our uh, managed patching customers. Um, uh, so, so that's important for, for organizations to, to stay on top of. Uh, next is offline backups. So obviously with the rise of, of ransomware like SamSam, Sam, there's one other that just came into uh, uh, the news recently. I believe it's called Zenis. Um, that is all that also seeks out and deletes backups so um, that's kind of repositioning the importance of having at least some offline backups in the event that you're hit by something like this uh, and then lastly have an incident response plan so the city of atlanta is clearly stumbling here um, not having many public uh, uh, declarations since this hit uh, haven't indicated whether they'll pay the, the ransom or not but their systems as of yesterday at least were still um, still down so have an incident response plan in place an incident response plan doesn't just involve the IT department it involves understanding the systems that the organization uses understanding what should be a priority for being recovered and coming back up in the event of a breach um, or in the event of any disaster um, and and then lastly, if you're an organization that operates with the public, and I know not all of our customers are, but understanding what your responsibilities are in regards to alerting people. And um, again, if you if you have to interact with the public, you probably need some measure of PR level response. Um, so all of those go into what an incident response plan looks like.